Hello and welcome to module 6. In this module we will be learning how to create the threads and fasteners using the SOLIDWORKS. First part of this module will be focused on learning the theoretical aspects of the threads and fasteners. The second part of this module will be focused on the whole wizard tool and also learn how to use the set screws. The next part will be talking about the minimum required length of a bolt for the external threads and the last part of this module will be focused on the calculation of the internal threaded depth for a specified length of a bolt. So let's begin with the first part of this module and that is to get introduced to the threads and fasteners. First, take a look at the general dimensioning symbols. These are the standards uh, based on the ASME Y14. And in the current practice, we always see these different types of uh, symbols created on the drawing sheet. For example, the diameter symbol is phi. The sphere diameter has a letter S next to the symbol phi. Radius R is used. If it's a controlled radius, then CR. Again, if it's a spherical radius, then SR. The counter bore or spot face is indicated by this open rectangle, um, as well as the counter sink is indicated by a V. And for the depth of the cut, or you know, for the uh, depth of the thread we used a horizontal line and a downward arrow attached to it. For the origin of dimensions, especially used for the whole tables, we will use the symbol O. For the square, the uh, square symbol, if the dimension is to be used as a reference, which means the tolerances are not applied on it, then we put the numbers in under the parenthesis. How many places we are using a particular feature, for example, chamfers at so many places or how many times we are repeating something, uh, we can indicate that by a cross and the arc length, the slope and a conical taper. So these are all these symbols and in the abbreviation for the notes, uh, you know, you can take a look at how we would specify them in the drawing sheet. So these are very important. Uh, symbols and their abbreviation to be noted so that we can create a engineering drawing which adheres to the ASME Y14 standards. Next, take a look at the screw threads. A screw, depending on what type of the head the screw or the fastener has, the nominal length can be decided. The thread is obviously a part of the uh, fastener and if you are using a nut then we can call that as a bolt. Also you can look at the other nominations uh, or the notations as uh, what is a shank, uh, you know, and where, where, where is the run out. Also what is the threaded length of the entire length of the fastener as well as the one that is not threaded is typically called as a grip length. The objective of a screw thread obviously is to provide a clamping force between the components that uh, we are trying to create an assembly of. Also it is used to restrict the uh, motion and also be able to transmit the power from one component to the other component. So geometrically the screw thread is basically a helical inclined plane. Uh, the helix is the curve that is defined by moving a point with uniform linear and angular velocity uh, around an axis. And the distance between the point moves linear in one revolution is called as the pitch. So the pitch of the thread is the most important number that we need to uh, worry about when we are trying to use that in a practical application. The internal threads are those when cut into the side wall of an existing hole. And the external threads are cut onto an external cylindrical surface of a typical fastener. Let's take a look at the thread profile and this is for the external uh, fastener. 
So there are important terms here that uh, we should be uh, remembering them when trying to design a fastener. One is the measure diameter. It is the largest diameter of the thread, as you can see here, from this particular point, the topmost part of the thread to the bottommost part. That is the major diameter. The minor diameter is the smallest diameter of the thread. So we can again take a look at this uh, profile and the lowest part of the thread can be attributed to the minor diameter. Crest is the peak of the thread. That is the crest. And when we are using the internal threads, then we can uh, call that as a valley for the internal threads. The root is the innermost part of the thread where minor uh, diameter is defined. So this is the uh, root as indicated here. The side wall of the thread is also extremely important uh, in terms of carrying the load uh, capacity for that particular uh, thread or a fastener and it's basically what the thread angle is defined with. Pitch diameter is the mean of the major and the minor diameters and the thread angle is the included angle between the two adjacent thread walls. And so lower is the thread angle, the greater is the load carrying capacity, typically for any fastener. Let's take a look at the thread form and the series. As you can notice from the right hand side figures, the difference between the fine threads and the coarse threads is pretty clear. The fine threads are shallower than the coarse threads. The coarse threads are uh, having the depth which is you know obviously more than the fine threads and in terms of the standard format the standard thread form for uh, inch unit uh, threads in the US is defined by the unified thread forms or in short it's called as the UN threads and the thread series is a standard that is based on the number of threads per inch so as you can notice here in the coarse threads as compared to the fine threads for a specified length, the number of threads per inch are going to be more for the fine threads as compared to the coarse threads. These thread series uh, are defined in three different categories. One is the coarse threads, the other one is the fine threads denoted by letter F and also we have the extra fine threads EF. These extra fine threads are typically uh, used in the aerospace applications. And one of the most important things as I was saying in the previous slide was the uh, pitch of the thread or threads per inch. Uh, these are the terms which are used in both the inches as well as the metric system of threads. So what's a threads per inch? It's basically a number of measure of crests per unit length measured along the axis of the thread. So if you look at this figure, if we uh, you know mark the distance mark the distance of one inch and then all we have to do is just count the number of crests in that one inch distance so if you're starting from the same point on one side and we end on the same point on the other side for that one inch unit of distance then the number of threads it becomes uh, TPI for that particular fastener so in this case we have six TPI However, the pitch of the thread is defined in the reciprocal of these threads per inch. Okay, so if I write P equal to 1 over N, where N is the number of threads per inch, the unit for pitch is equal to how many inches per thread. Right, so we need to find out how much is the distance between the successive two crests or the successive, uh, you know, the two roots. That distance, how many inches is present for one thread, and that becomes the pitch of the thread.
okay? So since if you're using the uh, inches as the unit standard, then this number is gonna be very less. You know, for example, in this particular example, we have six threads per inch, that's a six TPI. So the pitch, when we use that in the calculation, will be one sixth of an inch. So this, you know, would be a very small number. Therefore, it is uh, convenient to use the threads per inch if you are using the inches system of units. However, in the metric system of units, the pitch of the thread in terms of millimeters is directly indicated in the thread callout. And we will get to that in the next few slides. But before that, let's take a look at what kind of fits that we have uh, when we use the fasteners. So a class fit is a specification of how tightly a mate between the external and internal threads um, is done when we mesh the threads or the fasteners. So for UN threads, there are three classes of fits. One is the loose fit, the second one is the standard fit, and the third one is the tight fit. Loose fit, as the name suggests, are the threads assembled very easily by hand, and these are used in the cases where we need to frequently assemble and disassemble uh, the components. It's very common to the bolts and nuts, and typically requires the use of lock washers or lock nuts or the jam nuts so that a sufficient strength in the assembly can be assured. So that's the loose fit. Typically the hole size is uh, you know, much bigger than the fastener size so that the fastener can easily um, go in, in, in the hole so that we can then make use of the lock washers or jam nuts to securely tighten the assembly. Then the most commonly used or the most popular one is the standard fit. In the standard fit, the threads can be assembled partly by hand and for securely tightening the assembly, we need to make use of some tools. These are typically used in the semi-permanent assembly. So uh, the disassembly is not that frequent as it is in the loose fit assembly, uh, but it may be required to be disassembled at some point so that is basically the standard fit. The third one is the tight fit. So this can be started by hand, but it requires an assistance. For example, a spanner or whatever the tools that you want to use to advance the threads uh, in, in securing the assembly. And it's very common for the set screws. Set screws are those types of screws which are used in uh, mostly in the gears and the pulleys applications where you want to stop the relative motion between the two rotating components. These are used in the permanent assemblies where we don't want to take out the parts once it's assembled. There is the additional designation made for the fat threads. Uh, if you want to use the external threads like screws and bolts and so on, uh, then the letter A is used. And if it's an internal thread, for example, the threads uh, drawn on the side walls, uh, you know, like a threaded uh, hole depth, something like that, then we use the letter B uh, for the call out of these threads. Let's take a look at some of the examples of the uh, thread specifications. For example, if you have uh, been using the inches for the threads notation, Anytime the diameter of the uh, threads is less than an inch, we always start off with the decimal place. Uh, there is no zero before the decimal place, so it always starts with the decimal place, and then uh, typically three digits for uh, you know giving the nominal diameter. So in this case, it's 0 0.500, so the nominal diameter of the thread is half inch. Then it talks about what is the thread series, so we are using a unified national coarse threads, not the fine or the extra fine thread. So this is the coarse thread, UNC. And the number next to that indicates how many threads per inch. Okay, so there are 13 threads per inch. And that means the pitch of the thread is equal to 1 13th of an inch, uh, which means that the distance between the two consecutive crests of the thread in that fastener is equal to one thirteenth of an inch. And that's what it makes as there are 13 threads per inch. 
dash 2a that indicates the um, the class of the fit as we looked at in the previous uh, slide so for example if you are using class 2 which is the standard fit and a for the external so we we are writing 2a in this case so this is a standard fit and the external trace which is indicated by the letter a times 3.00 long and you know sometimes we want to use how much is the length of the fastener that we are using so in this case it's basically equal to 3.0 inches so that is a you know simpler way of uh, using the thread callout or the specification sometimes some additional parameters are also involved here for example in this case you have LH and LH means that uh, this is a left hand uh, of the thread instead of the right hand thread so if you notice typically in the case of uh, the pedals of a bicycle in order to not have these threads worn out quickly one side is a right hand and the other side is the left hand uh, when the pedal is attached to the, to the crankshaft. So in practice there are the left hand threads also used and that must be indicated in the drawing as well. Next we take a look at the metric thread examples which are based on the ISO 965 standards. And the metric threads always start with the either the letter M or it starts with the MJ as the two letters. There is a difference in M and MJ series. The M series stands for the standard metric thread profile and MJ series stands for a modified series where the crest and the root diameters or their dimensions are specified. Um, again, the MJ series uh, has this increased uh, root radius and so its fatigue strength is much higher in the uh, MJ series as compared to the M series. The number after this letter M or MJ starts, stands for the nominal diameter which is the 10 millimeters in this case by 1.5 in this case and which indicates that the pitch of the thread is 1.5 millimeter. So you see the difference in how the pitch is reported for the inches and the uh, metric system of units. In inches system of units, the number of threads per inch is indicated and then from that we have to calculate what is the pitch of the thread. However, in the metric system of units, the pitch is given directly here which is the distance between two consecutive uh, crests of the thread. And then it's optional that the class of the fit is provided. So the metric system has a different uh, class of fits as compared to the English system of units. In this case, 6G is mentioned. And the 6G stands for a general purpose fit if you are using the external fasteners or if H is indicated in the capital letter, then it stands for the internal fit. The close fit is indicated by 5G, 6G, if it's external, and you know 6H or 6, uh, 5G, 6G, or uh, 5H, 6H for the uh, internal, and in that case, it will be capital letters. One important thing while using a metric thread callout is that the default thread pitch is 1.5 millimeters if no pitch is mentioned so for example if a thread if a fastener is indicated as let's say uh, m10 by 30 something like that what it typically stands for is that it's the m series standard metric thread with 10 millimeters nominal diameter and 30 millimeters length of that fastener so if there is no pitch indicated here, it means that the pitch should be taken as standard 1.5 millimeters, the coarse uh, thread series in that. Otherwise, if the pitch is anything but 1.5 millimeters, then it would be specified uh, explicitly. For example, you may see the thread colored as M10 by 1 by 30, 
So what it means is that you have the standard M series metric thread with 10 millimeters diameter, one millimeter pitch of the thread and 30 millimeters is the length of the thread. Now let's take a look at some of the thread callouts and the symbols. We just looked at it in the very first uh, or the second slide of this uh, presentation. But again, some of the most commonly used thread callouts that you would see in the drawing are the counter bore or the spot face symbol, which is this open rectangle, or a V-shaped symbol, which stands for the countersink symbol, the diameter symbol in the square symbol, and the depth symbol. So as you can see from this left hand side figure, the counter bore hole has this larger diameter up to certain height and then the smaller diameter for the rest of the threaded depth. The cross sectional view of the counter bore hole makes it clear as the uh, type of the hole that has been created. Also for the countersink hole, we have a V shaped so that when the fastener is introduced here, the top face of that fastener can be flushed with the top surface of the part. And so the head of the fastener is not, uh, you know, coming out of the top surface of the, uh, of the part. A simple thread callout for a counter bore hole would be something like this. 0.375 is the inner diameter of the hole counter bore diameter is half inch and this is um, 18 inch or, or you know whatever the depth that it's been mentioned there same thing for the counter sink uh, instead of counter bore symbol it will be replaced by the counter sink symbol it will also say what is the angle for that counter sink and what is the uh, then the diameter of the counter sink so this outer diameter of the counter sink is 0.625 and then 82 degrees is the angle. Also, the other way of call out for the external thread would be 0.4375 is the nominal diameter, 20 threads per inch, unified national fine thread is used, 2 is the standard fit, A stands for the external uh, fastener, 1.5 inches is the length. And the type of the screw is indicated as the Fullister head cap screw in this case. So all the detailed information is provided and the thread is represented by using the dotted line, uh, which is uh, close to the outermost diameter of that, uh, of that fastener. Also at the end, there is a indication of the chamfered end uh, for a cap screw that is been indicated here. The common head types available are the hexagonal head, as you can see it from this figure, uh, the filister head, which is this one, then the flat head, oval head, the round head, and the hexagonal socket head. These are the most commonly used um, you know, these screws and the bolts uh, in a application depending on the type of the application and the uh, strength that is required for that particular application. These screws and bolts and these fasteners are prepared from a variety of uh, different types of materials based on if you want to control the corrosion uh, or not or, you know, what type of uh, spatial grade of the steel that is used to manufacture that fastener or you know if it requires a uh, brass coating on it or not so it, it is a very vast field in itself uh, you know when we try to really deep dive into this now let's uh, take a look at the types of mechanical fasteners uh, there are three important types one is the cap screws machine screws and the set screws cap screws are for the larger diameters Machine screws are used for the smaller diameters of the fasteners. The way we can uh, clamp the components using the fasteners is depend on what uh, type is used. For example, in this top figure here, when we use this clamping force to clamp these two components, 
the upper part of this component is not having any thread threads and the lower part of this component is having the internal threads which is then meshed with the threads on this fastener and so the assembly is created so typically we call this as a screw because there is no use of any nuts that is used in this figure below so in this case uh, we're not really threading either of these two components and the hole is slightly wider than the diameter of the fastener that's going in it and then the nut is used it may or may not include the washer along with it to tighten and clamp this assembly and also a very important uh, mechanical engineering principle is that there should be at least two visible threads that should be uh, you know coming after the end of the nut so after the end of the nut there should be at least two visible threads that should be uh, you know coming out and that basically ensures the strength in the assembly uh, for this nut and bolt assembly for the cap screws the threaded end is chamfered minimum length uh, of the thread for most of the cap screws is given as two times diameter plus 0.5 or if it's a socket head screw then it's two times diameter plus 0.5 although the most common practice is to just use two times diameter uh, for the calculation of the minimum length of the thread. So in terms of the machining screws, if the fastener length is greater than two inches, then the minimum thread length is required to be at least 1.75. Or if the fastener length is less than two inches, then the minimum threaded length is always equal to the fastener length. So these are some of the, uh, you know, important uh, things in the uh, mechanical engineering that one must uh, you know remember while using it in the uh, you know design uh, for the components and the assemblies the third category of the mechanical fasteners is the set screws and in these set screws uh, typically the pulleys and the gears are uh, you know assembled to the shaft and in order to prevent the slipping of those shafts with this power transmission components the set screws are used to um, you know secure that assembly so let's take a look at this set screws as we can see here except for uh, the exception of an antiquated square head all the set screws are headless fasteners and therefore the uh, threaded throughout the length. Uh, there are different types of uh, uh, set screws available as their functionality is to control or restrict the rotational motions mostly, uh, you know, with the gears uh, or the pulleys on the shafts. There are different types available, flat, cup type or oval or dog or the cone, uh, depending on what uh, the set screw that we are using for a particular application. Most of these set screws are class three fit, which means that they need to be uh, assisted with a tool in order to start the threading or, you know, start progressing the threads, uh, you know, so that the assembly can be uh, secured. Most of the set screws are either socket or the uh, slot types. And in order to conclude uh, this particular topic, let's take a look at the two great resources. And of course, there are so many other resources as well. But uh, one is the MacMaster.com and the other resource is the BoltDepot.com. Let's take a look at, uh, you know, very briefly these two websites uh, before we conclude this. So the boltdepot.com has all this list of uh, the available screws and nuts and bolts. On the fastener info tab, if you notice, uh, there are various uh, good resources for the information on the fasteners uh, and the tools are provided. The fastener type chart is also provided that explains uh, what are the different kinds of screws and the bolts are available. Also, how to measure the length of the fastener so when we go to this measuring the length typically if you are using a uh, 
countersink, then the entire length is taken into consideration. But if you are using a uh, hexagonal head, uh, then only the length of the threaded portion, uh, excluding the head, is measured as the length of the fastener. So that is the boltdepot.com. Um, the other website is the macmastercar.com, and this is again a great resource for uh, all the power transmission components. You can see the screws and bolts, the threaded rods, eye bolts and U bolts, nuts, washers, and all these different categories of the fasteners provided here. For example, if you click on the screws and the bolts, you can see a variety of uh, these parts available with them. If I click on the hexagonal head, I can choose what is the thread size that I'm looking for. I can use either the inches or metric. Let's say I go with the metric, M10. The length of the fastener, let's say I'm gonna use, uh, you know, out of the standard uh, dimensions, I'm gonna use 20 millimeters. Either I want a fully threaded or a partially threaded. So I can keep making the selection on this side and then choose what material that I want. I want a brass coated or a plastic or a stainless steel or whatever the type we are interested in. If I click on the brass, there's only one type available here. And a really good uh, aspect of this website is that when I click on the product detail, if you scroll below, you would notice that uh, there is a file available, a CAD file available that you can uh, download on it. So if we say SOLIDWORKS file, uh, and if I save it, you can click on this and uh, you can see the drawing or the uh, part file. Uh, you know, obviously this is a course threads and you can see the uh, part file for the fasteners that you can use it in the um, designing of the assembly. So that is it for this part of the video. In the next part, we will look at the functionality of the whole wizard and the set screws followed by the calculation of the external thread fasteners as well as the internal threaded depth calculations. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.